Hey, this is Scott Townsend, and I'm glad to announce that we've got two new subscribers to the show, Pops Daylight Donuts and Castafly Outdoor Adventures. Uh, the first one, Pops Daylight Donuts, man, they've got the best tasting donuts, sausage wraps, pastries in Northeast Oklahoma. And also, if you'll tell the staff there, hey, Scott Townsend said to give me a large spicy pig, they'll give you a free large spicy sausage wrap. But you have to tell them Scott Townsend sent you. So tell them, hey, Scott Townsend told me to tell you to give me a large spicy pig. So there's the offer. There's the, there's the call to action. So go to Pops Daylight Donuts. Say hi to Mark for me. And uh, yeah, go to Pops Daylight Donuts and get you some. The other sponsor is Castafly Outdoor Adventures. Adventure, that's where it begins. We look to create and document our moments in time while embracing the majestic wonder and beauty of the great outdoors. Our quest is to explore the back roads of the Ozarks, camping, fishing, and just getting lost. Refresh your spirit and join us on our next adventure. Welcome to the Scott Townsend Show, brought to you by Dietzo Man Productions. Hey, this is Scott Townsend. Thanks for joining the Scott Townsend Show. Today I have with me a special guest, a good friend, longtime friend, uh, just probably the nicest guy. And he's known as the nicest guy in Bartlesville. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, a good friend of mine, David Austin. David, how's it going? Hey, doing well, Scott. Good to see you, man. It's always good to see you. So, <clears throat> The reason why I had you on the show, as you know, is uh, you guys, you and uh, some friends just got back from Alaska, a place I've never been. Of course, there's a lot of places I've never been. But uh, after you started telling some of the stories about your trip, I, uh, you know, I, it's, it's, uh, I thought it would be really interesting. A lot of people probably haven't been to Alaska. First question, why Alaska? Well, I think everybody wants to vacation in Alaska in the middle of winter. And so we were just able to make that dream come true. You know, just we're, we're one of the select few. So so there was that. Now, a friend of ours, uh, she wanted to see the Northern Lights. And um, so she scheduled the trip and did a fantastic job of scheduling it. And anyway, she had been talking about it and said, OK, hey, well, look, you know, I'd like to see the Northern Lights. And, and I guess they're best viewed in the middle of winter. And. And would you and Summer be interested in going? And then we'll get another couple, you know, a uh, couple other friends of ours uh, to go as well. So it'll be six of us, you know, we'll all go to Alaska. And Summer and I, neither of us had ever been, my wife Summer and I, neither of us had been to Alaska before. We thought, well, okay. Um, seems kind of crazy going to Alaska in the middle of the winter, but what the heck? Let's just throw caution to the wind. We're in. So, uh, so that's just kind of how it got started. And so we were there from uh, February 9th through the 18th. And the irony is, I think we might have escaped the cold weather here and gone to a warmer climate there in uh, Alaska. So, you know. <laughs> I know we were giving you a hard time about <clears throat> going to someplace so cold. And then yeah. it wound up getting colder here than it was in Alaska. <laughs> well, I think I told you, you know, there was one time where I'm sitting there in Anchorage because our trip started in Fairbanks and then we ended up uh, in in Anchorage and that's you know where we ended up flying home from but so I'm in Anchorage and I wake up one morning and I look at uh, the weather app and it's 18 degrees in Anchorage I thought well I wonder what it is in Bartlesville it was 16 so uh, or no 11 pardon me it was 11 so it was it was colder in Bartlesville in February than it was in Anchorage so yeah we we obviously made the right move <laughs> and in Houston it was even colder wasn't it? or almost Houston was, uh, Houston was 16 so Anchorage was 18 Houston was 16 and Bartlesville was 11 in the middle of February. Yeah. <laughs> you know what you were doing all along. Exactly. It was, there was a method to the madness. <laughs> so you guys left from Tulsa. And uh, so what was the trip like? You went from Tulsa to. Yeah. So it was, um, 
And that's the toughest thing about Alaska is probably just getting there. So we went from Tulsa to Dallas to Seattle to Fairbanks. And um, so when we, you know, we left, I think our flight left Tulsa, I think about 12.30 p.m. And, and Anchorage, Alaska is three hours behind us. So we get into um, Fairbanks at one in the morning. So, you know, after all the layovers and the flights and all that kind of stuff. So, okay. So it's, you know, it, it had been a trip of, you know, 15 hours, whatever it was. And so we get into Fairbanks and it's negative 24 degrees. So, um, which is always pleasant. Everybody right. loves it. So I was dressed accordingly. Obviously I had t-shirts, shorts, and flip-flops. And so I was, <laughs> you know, sun visor and everything, obviously also, but um, you know, I was, we were both bundled up and everything, but we went outside and some friends of ours had gotten a house that we were going to stay in in Fairbanks through Airbnb. So that was about, um, maybe a 20 minute drive, 25 minute drive, whatever it was. And so we go through and we get our luggage and they had left us the rental car that they had gotten because they had gotten two vehicles and they left one of the rental cars for us. And so we just went out to the rental car area outside the main terminal there in Fairbanks to get our rental car. So the first thing we noticed was our rental car was plugged in. And so, um, and it was basically just like um, an extension cord hanging out of the grill of the rental car plugged into a pole right there, you know, where the car was parked. And it wasn't diesel? Now, what it, no, it was just a regular car. But what they do is they plug them in to ensure that the battery doesn't get too cold. No. Basically just the engine doesn't get too cold. And right. basically what they say is, and every car that you would look at there in Fairbanks had an extension cord hanging out of the grill. Hmm. And, you know, it's basically a case of if you have sustained temperatures of 15 below or colder, then you need to plug your car in. And, you know, when we got there, it was 24 below. Yeah. So we go in and that was a new one on us, but we unplugged the car and got it ready and put all the luggage in it. And, and now we're driving to the house. So we get to the house there and, and uh, Fairbanks after a 20, 25 minute drive. And, uh, and now what time is it now? That's about two in the morning, two in the morning. And it's a balmy negative 24. <laughs> and, uh, it was a great first day of the trip. You know, obviously after 15 hours of travel or something, we weren't tired at all. You know, no. we felt very heavy, light of energy. So we get there to the house and we're at the point to where, again, we've had this 15, 16 hour day, whatever it's been. And you're literally to the point to where, okay, the day is just about all over, over. All I need to do is literally just walk through the door. So there was a code on the, uh, on the lock for the house. And uh, so we go in and the house had a porch, but it was, it was a screened in porch. So there was really no protection from the cold, none at all. So it's negative 24 on the porch, just like it is outside. So they'd given us this access code for the lock. And in theory, you just plug in the code and then you turn the lock. And now I'm walking in the door and my day's over. I can go to sleep in Fairbanks, let vacation begin, happy day. I don't like so, the way, I don't like the way you use the word in theory. In theory. So um, anyway, I put in the code, the light goes green and I try to turn the lock. Nothing happens. It won't open. Okay. Well, I do it again. The light goes green, which again, it, the light going green is, is telling me, okay, well the, the code works, but the lock won't go. Okay. So we do this a few times and we think, okay, well, they're inside. In fact, I can see one of my friends, I can see his chief scarf hanging just inside the door. And it was almost <laughs> like it was mocking me. You know, you'd probably like to get in here. You know, I'm warm. Here I am. I'm the chief scarf. I'm in this warm house. Obviously, you're not. You're a negative 24. You're in this uh, open porch. So, okay, well, let's let's call them. Let's text them. There's four of them in the house, two couples. Let's call or text. So we do all that. Nothing. And so, you know, they all had their phones shut off. It's two in the morning. You're not ex exactly expecting company or right. somebody calling to shoot the breeze or anything like that. So... You know, we continue messing with the lock. And at one point, you know, I'm thinking, okay, well, because it felt like, okay, maybe there was some points to where it felt like, okay, if you just, you know, hold your tongue just perfectly and maybe your head just sideways, just so that maybe it'll, it'll engage. Right. And anyway, I take off one of my gloves. And so I'm messing with it. And I can literally feel my finger freezing to the lock, to the metal on the lock. So yeah, so my finger's a little worse for wear. I, fa I think I got a little bit of frostbite. It's good now. So right. I, apparently frostbite is temporary, which is good. But uh, anyway, good to know. We, have, we do the exactly good to know. If you ever get frostbite, hopefully it's not going to be a, lot, a lifelong affliction. But um, 
we mess with it for 30 minutes, try to call, try to text, nada. So finally we thought, okay. So um, I went back to the car, yelped the closest hotels, North Pole, Alaska. North Pole, Alaska is right outside of Fairbanks. Okay, I guess that's where we're staying. So I called them, it's three in the morning. They were probably surprised to hear from me. Oh, okay, you want to be in <laughs> yeah. North Pole, Alaska at our inn here? Okay, yeah, welcome aboard. And so I called them, it was another 20, 25 minute drive to the North Pole. Uh, North Pole, Alaska, not the actual North Pole of Klamath. Right. But, uh, but North Pole, Alaska was cool. You drive there and it's like, they have the market cornered on Christmas. You know, they have, you know, Santa Claus Lane and Christmas Tree Street and all this kind of stuff. So we stayed, that was our first night was staying at the North Pole Inn there in North Pole, Alaska. And then we met our friends who felt guilty. And so that was good for, uh, for Thai food for lunch the next day. But the nice thing is, as horrible as that experience was, it's going to make for a great story. You know, make for a great story. Know, if we wouldn't have gone through that, wouldn't have the story. So, uh, so that you, was wouldn't, you wouldn't have gone to the North Pole, of Alaska. Exactly. Exactly. I got to say, we didn't get to see Santa Claus, but we got to see the North Pole. So that was just as good. Well, there you go. It was worth the frostbite. Sounds like it's exactly, worth the frostbite. Exactly. And, you know, it wouldn't have been worth it if it would have been like on my nose or my ear and one of those fall off or something like that. But just on my finger where it heals up quickly. Sure, that's a small price to pay. Yeah. <laughs> so just the, <clears throat> between you, the door was the only thing standing between you and warmth and comfort. Yeah, and, and, you know, you, you would think, OK, well, if I'm flying from Tulsa to Fairbanks, OK, well, I go through everything I go through with driving to the airport and getting on the flight and let me make sure I make my connection. And, you know, now I'm getting my luggage. Once I get in Fairbanks, now I'm driving to the house. You would think the easiest part is simply opening the lot, you know, the door and walking through the door. You know, you would think that would be the easiest part of the trip. So to get tripped up on that particular portion of the trip, that was, that was, that was really a special treat. We really enjoyed that. You know, there were no cuss words uttered or anything. It was just, a lot of smiles, a lot of <laughs> yeah. so very pleasant, not frustrating at all. The last, the last foot of your trip. Exactly, literally walking through the door. That's what we could do. Get everything else, everything else. Made all eighteen connections or whatever it was to get to Fairbanks. <laughs> everything else went smooth. The last part, literally just walking through the door. No, can't do that. Couldn't so, do it. Oh, that was good times. That was good times. Yeah. What's uh what's it like traveling these days? I haven't been I haven't traveled in a in a very long time now. You know, with everything that's going on and been going on, what's uh, what's traveling like these days? It's um you know since COVID struck you know obviously in March of 2020 we have traveled three times. We flew to Houston, we flew to Denver, and we flew to Alaska. And um, I really I think they do about as good a job as they can with it. I really do. I, you know everybody. Uh, seems to be very good about, you know, respecting the, the health and safety protocols. Everybody wears a mask, everyone, um, you know, um, especially early on. I think the first trip we took was to Houston. And on that one, they did a really good job about spacing seats. Um, I think you're seeing a little bit less of that. I think they're maybe relaxing a little bit of that. But still, I, I think they do a, a good job of of respecting the health and safety protocols as far as you know even people in the terminals you know kind of sitting and making sure that they can kind of social distance i think right. everybody's kind of aware of the inherent danger of um traveling in this kind of environment and, and so I, th I think by and large what i've seen and like i said i've only traveled three times um but i think people are, are respectful of what we're dealing with you know in the, are, are they what's that do they still have the center uh, center seats left open, or are they? Um, they weren't on the last, not on this trip. They weren't. Uh, they were whenever we went to Houston. I believe they were when we went to Denver. On this one, no, no. Hmm. You know, if 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 it was open just due to somebody not sitting there, then okay. But they weren't. Um, they weren't making those special protocols on this particular trip. So what's it like? Uh, you, what's it like traveling with friends? Um, um, I kind of well, have a problem with that, and I'm not sure why. I think you and I have talked about that a little bit before. Um, you seem to be okay with it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, 
um, you know, the tree, the, the friends that we were with in Alaska are the same friends we were with in, in uh, Colorado. So, um, so yeah, we, you know, um, and that was an Aspen trip. We went to Aspen. <clears throat> and, um, yeah, we always traveled really well with them. I mean, known them for years. And, um, um, you know, like at the, at the um, well, I guess we stayed a few different houses there in, in, uh, in Alaska. Um, but, you know, I, I, everybody had their own room and owned the bathrooms and stuff like that. So it was just, you know. No bunk beds or anything. <clears throat> no, no, no bunk beds or anything like that. It was just, and it was easy. And it, I think the nice thing is, is um, in our group, everybody's pretty easy going. I mean, um, um, you know, uh, our friend Deb, she's the one who planned Alaska. And she's really good as far as planning and everything. But as far as the rest of it, you know, pretty easy going. Hey, you guys, hey, everybody feel like Thai food tonight? Yeah, sure. Okay, pizza? Yeah, okay, rock and roll. Right. And so I think it just kind of works that way. So really no, yeah, it's always been pretty easy. And then the trip that we took in uh, to Houston uh, earlier this, this uh, well, I guess late 2020, uh, that was with my family. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and, you know, they, they roll pretty easy also. So really, yeah, no, no problems there. Well, what, what kind of stuff have you run into? Not to put you on the spot. <laughs> no, I, uh, my my brother and his wife, um, we have vacationed with them, and that was uh, a, a very great experience, good experience, really good experience. <clears throat> I mean, we all roll pretty easy, you know, but yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I've, if I was with someone I didn't know very well. Uh, oh, that makes it trip, awkward, you know, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think... Uh, now, if if it was like a like you had like six people in your trip, yeah, uh huh, six. I think I could handle that because yeah, it was great. you know I kind of feel like sometimes I, I I put myself in the position of cruise director, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. trying to get everybody going and whatnot. But if I have a if I, if there was a group of people that I'm with and I can just kind of roll with everybody, you know, I think that would be I think that would be. Uh, good time. So next time y'all go, uh, be sure and let me know, and I'll uh, I'll come along and see if it works out. See if I don't Absolutely. see if I don't ruin the trip. I don't think you would. I, I think you would enhance the trip. It would be awesome. It would be good times. Very good times. As long as you're not going to Russia or no, no. Uh, and, and South Pole. Never, yeah, no. We would never go somewhere crazy like Alaska in the middle of winter. We'd never do something like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> never. Oh man. So what, you know, having been to Alaska, what was probably the most memorable thing about the whole trip besides being <clears throat> locked out the first night? Yeah. And, and, and obviously I'll never forget that. And, and I do hope my finger feels up, uh, heals up sometimes, but, uh, um, we, uh, well, we went dog sledding, which, you know, I think I mentioned to you, you know, whenever we were talking first about this trip, I mean, the cool thing about Alaska was, we did things that we felt like, okay, well, they were very Alaska centric, kind of like, okay, well, look, if I'm not doing this in Alaska, I'm probably not going to go dog sledding in Bartlesville or New York right. or LA or something like go that. Go find a bear or something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We saw moose, you know, I don't see a whole lot of moose in Dewey or anything like that. And so <laughs> it felt very Alaska centric. And so, yeah. So what's the plural of moose? I think it's just moose. Yeah, I think it's kind of like sheep. What's the plural of sheep? And it just sheep. Well, like goose. Yeah. Well, goose and geese. Geese. Yeah. So moose. Geese would it? Would be like goose and geese. See, I don't think that's right. That's, <laughs> maybe it is. I'll write it out and I'll see if it looks right. Yeah. Two e's, I think. But yeah. No, I think it's just moose and moose. I think. Yeah. 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 But, Sorry, go um, ahead. Um, yeah, 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 but I digress. Um, but yeah, so we went uh, on the dog sled and we did that at like, <laughs> it seemed like everything we were doing, a lot of it was, you know, okay, so I'm in Alaska, so let me find the, the coldest point of the day in Alaska, and that's probably going to be the wee hours. And so it seems like that's when we did everything. But the, the dog sledding was like an eight mile course that lasted about an hour. And it was, I think we started that at nine at night, 10 at night, something like nine that. Nine or 10 at night? Yeah, so, um, um, yeah, obviously you just want to go dog sledding and then let's just hit the bars or something. But, um, but yeah, so they, you know, you go and, and, and um, as far as the dog sledding place, 
you go and they have a yurt set up, which is just like a big tent made of, um, I don't know, animal hide, something like that, but it was a yurt. I haven't spent a whole lot of time in yurts and I haven't read up much on them, but we went to a yurt. And so it was cool. And it was just like a, yeah, a big tent or something. And so we go in the yurt and hang out and, and they had some cocoa and, you know, they had, uh, you know, heating unit there. And so you hang out in the yurt and then uh, you go out and see the dogs that are going to be pulling your dog sled. And, you know, they're like it said, it was the, uh, the six of us, you know, three couples. And so. Uh, All on one sled? No, 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 no. They, it's um, Summer and I got in the sled and they zipped us up. And then the musher was standing behind us, oh. the dogs pulling us. Okay. And asking huskies, and, and you know, I guess the huskies, they weren't quite as big as what I thought they would be. I mean, it's oh yeah, it's not like our dog Iggy at home, and she's twelve pounds. She probably wouldn't make for a good mush dog, but uh, <laughs> but they were probably, you know, sixty pounds or something. Not a huge dog. Yeah. And um, I think how many dogs? 12, about twelve of them, I think. <clears throat> Was, one of them was a, I think, a retired, recently retired, you know, racing. All of them were racing dogs, but I think one of them was recently retired, who was pretty decorated, you know, because they talk about some of these dogs that have run in the Iditarod and. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, there's a Yukon race that's that's uh, pretty prominent, and so um, those were the, you know, some of the dogs that were pulling our our sled. That's and, cool. Uh, so it was about an eight mile course and. You know that night it was probably 10 15 below so it was it was a little chilly and so you know we had these you know we're all bundled up and everything but i could still feel the cold you know on my face and on my fingertips and on my toes but it was still just a cool experience and so yeah. you know that was one of the experiences i'll always remember because you know um at this point in my life you know it's not like i can rattle through and say okay yeah okay i dog sledded that one time in houston and then i dog sledded you know, several times here in Bartlesville, and then when right. I was in New York, sure, I, I dog sledded there. Who wouldn't? So, I mean, yeah, I've dog sledded once in my life. It's in Alaska. I don't know that there's going to be a second time that I dog sled. And so, yeah, just check the box, a, man. Yeah, exactly. It's probably an experience that I'll always remember. And then we also went to a reindeer ranch. So, a reindeer you know, ranch. Yeah, and that again felt very Alaska centric. You know, I mean, it's you know, okay. Um, you know, the, uh, I think Deb set it up. Okay, we're, we're going to a reindeer ranch. Okay, I guess that's what we're doing. We're in Alaska. We might as well go to a rent, reindeer right. ranch. You know, obviously, I've been to North Pole, Alaska, and so it kind of see, uh, seems like it's in keeping with the theme. So, okay, so we're, we're doing the reindeer thing. So, right. the reindeer thing was cool. You go and you see them, and they, um, you know, kind of just release the reindeer, and now you're in the middle of reindeer, just, you know, hoping you don't get uh, trampled or um you know speared by their horns or anything like that but i mean they were really cool creatures and and um well there wasn't a fence between you and the reindeer no they were just right there and you were walking with them you go on this trail i mean they're a pretty docile animal i mean they oh, yeah. um um but they were really neat i mean it was just a, another neat experience you're walking in the snow with reindeer and um so this was like what 11 at night or something no this one was actually fortunately this was in the middle of the day yeah. So, you know, uh, so that was unusual and, and, um, and, and, and welcome. That was a welcome change yeah. welcome in the middle of the night. But yeah, so you're just walking around with reindeer and, and, you know, the people at the reindeer ranch are telling you about, you know, um, some of the conservation efforts they've done and, you know, some of the work they do with the reindeer and, and um, you know, um, lifespan of the reindeer. I think they live about 15 years, something oh, like cool. that. Oh, cool. And, um, and so you saw you know, different um, uh, age groups of these of these reindeer. I think there were probably 16, 18 of them, something like that. You know, they knew each of these reindeer, you know, by name. You know, they have distinctive personalities, almost like, you know, BB, you know, your dog or Iggy. Right. Your dog. They have distinctive personality. You know, right. They're all individuals and everything. And it was just, it was cool. I mean, I, I never, never seen a reindeer before. And, you know, you could pet them and, and, um, um, just kind of, you know, we had our pictures taken with the reindeer and everything. So again, mm. that was one that was just very Alaska centric. So, right. um, yeah, so from frostbite to dog sledding to um, reindeer, um, all very Alaska centric. Have you seen the video of the guy and the, and the, and the uh, man and woman are on the back of a camel and the uh, camel's trying to get up and can't get up and 
it's just uh it's it, oh, it's, I haven't seen that. it's on youtube yeah i'll have to send it to you i might even put it here in this uh, video in okay, the video portion out. of this uh, yeah i need to check that out So you need to, uh, yeah. So what's what else is on your bucket list? I mean, uh, see, we got the North Pole checked off, or the North Pole Alaska checked off. We've got yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, how many we states have you been? Yeah, oh, the Northern, Northern, Northern Lights, Lights, yeah. Yeah, the Northern Lights were cool. Um, in fact, I'll tell you about that. So the Northern Lights. That was the thing about Alaska was I, I went into this trip cold, man. I didn't, didn't, you know, and I was cold obviously once I got there for the weather. But um, I say that you. Know, I didn't know what to expect. I mean, I, you know, I had, I had done little to no research on Alaska. And so, um, you're just along for the ride. I was kind of along for the ride, but it was, it was, you know, travel to me is always educational, which is great. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. you learn about, you know, whatever location you're in and the people and the customs and everything else. And so in that regard, it was beautiful. And, and you know, and it, I guess it was okay that I kind of went in with not a whole lot of knowledge because I, I feel like I came away with some aha moments about Alaska. Right. But um, the Northern Lights was another one to where, okay, I wasn't quite sure what to expect. And so we stayed at this hotel and they just kind of have an area where they go to observe the Northern Lights. And so they said, you know, every fourth or fifth day, you know, they seem to come out and kind of make a prominent appearance as far as the Northern Lights. And they said, you know, it's especially good on a, on a, um, very clear night. You kind of get those in the middle of winter, you know, the air is thinner and everything. And so mm -hmm. um, anyway, we, we go to this observatory and it's just kind of like this big open uh, convention area or something. Um, um, not anything real, you know, um, fancy or anything like that, but just a cool place to just kind of gather and sit in there and sip cocoa and coffee outside of the elements. Cause again, it was probably 10 to 15 below. And so we go from our hotel and we walk to this little, you know, uh, area where they observe the Northern Lights. And so we're inside and they have, you know, a little fireplace going and on one screen they have, um, basically it's dedicated just to this uh, Northern Lights centric website. It just has information about the Northern Lights and what you can, you know, expect in, in Fairbanks. And so there we are and you can look at that. And then on another screen, they basically had radar kind of showing you, okay, are the Northern Lights, does it look like they'll make an appearance and everything? And so you could kind of watch some of that stuff. And then the people who are in charge would let you know, hey, it looks like, you know, they might be coming up. And this was, this was probably 10, 11 at night. Again, keeping with the late night theme. So right. at one point they said, okay, well, it looks like, you know, they're, they're going to make an appearance. And, and I'm hardly an expert on Northern Lights, but I think they're basically just kind of solar flares that are attracted to the poles of the planet, the North Pole and the, and the uh, South Pole, probably due to the magnetic pull, I believe is what it is. So, um, and you check me on that, go to Google or something like that. Yeah, we'll, fact, we'll fact check that. Yeah, yeah please do. I'm probably <laughs> For those of you listening to the show here, you might want to fact check the, the yeah, Northern so I'm probably wrong about 100% of what I'm saying. But, <laughs> so we go out and, um, you know, again, I'm, I'm not sure what to expect, but it, by this time it's maybe 10, 30, 11 at night, something like that. So they said, okay, we'll look over there and you kind of get a feel for them, you know? Uh, looks like they're starting to make an appearance. And so you look out and on the horizon, it's almost like watching a sunrise, except it's 11 at night. And instead of being, you know, yellow, orange, you know, like a sunrise, it's kind of this translucent green. And so as you're looking, you know, it's, it's dark, you know, it's 10, 30, 11 at night, but you can see the horizon and you can see some trees and then behind the trees, here comes this translucent light on the on the horizon. Again, rising almost like a, a sunrise, except it starts moving quickly. And after a pretty short while, they've 
the translucent lights have risen beyond the tree line and now they're starting to make their way all the way across the sky. And um, eventually they move all the way across the sky to the opposite horizon. Hmm. And now you're just kind of, you know, all above or is just this trend, this just kind of the swath of translucent green light with some purple um, elements to it also. And it was just, you know, again, just extremely unique, you know, nothing I had ever experienced in my life before. And right. So outside they had a fire and people had their cameras and I was taking pictures in summer and, and our friends and everybody else who was out there and the people who organized it said, okay, well, you guys were fortunate. They said, you know, on a, on a 10 scale, this is probably an eight, you know, as far as what you're seeing is what we thought. Wow. Okay. Well, a we're lucky to have even seen them since, you know, they said usually they only make a really good appearance every fourth or fifth night. And then B to get an eight on a 10 scale. Okay. Well, we feel good about that. Right. But they also talk about the fact that the Northern lights dance. And that was interesting to me because, um, you know, you, you, you'll look up to, in the sky and you'll see a cloud moving and, you know, it's kind of, you know, kind of languid, you know, it's, it's kind of, you know, slow moving and, and, um, but when you looked at these Northern lights, it was in some portions of them, it was almost like they were dancing. It was like, looking at the street on a really hot day and seeing those heat waves that are really moving quickly back and forth. And that right. to me was very unique to look up in the sky and see something shaking and kind of shimmering as quickly as it was. Hmm. And so that was another one that was just seemed to me to be very uniquely Alaska. And so, um, so that was cool. And I'll say this, I would definitely go back to Alaska. Alaska was cool. And I'd go back in the winter. Uh, but I've heard the summers are cool also. And hmm. so, um, yeah. I would definitely make that trip again. That's a, that's cool. Yeah. Well, um, thanks for regaling us with some uh, a, a travel stories to Alaska. Yeah. Dave's travel log. Good times. Good times in Alaska. Yes. And next time you go, so uh, what's next on your bucket list? What uh, what are you going to ride a camel in Africa or? We talked about Ala We talked about Africa. I've never been there before. Um, we talked about Germany. Never been to Germany before. You know, I've been fortunate to travel. Um, you know, as you know, you know, I graduated high school in Japan. Um, so you know, I've been able to see obviously Japan and Hong Kong and and um, uh, Korea, um, um, Guam, uh, Philippines. Um, my parents lived in in. Uh, Italy for a while, so I've seen that. Um, been to Amsterdam and London and Ireland and and so and Scotland. So we've, we've been able to see. Some, yeah, in your honor, we went to Scotland in your honor. But um, it was it was our tip of the hat to you. So yeah, but um, so we've been fortunate to be able to travel some places. But yeah, I've never been to Germany. I'd love to go there. You know, Africa sounds cool. That that would be great. Um, never been like Norway, Sweden, you know, Finland, any of those countries, Iceland. So I, I think any of that would be interesting, you know, and, and so to answer your question, I don't know that there's one that um, that I would necessarily rank above another as far as places I would really like to see, maybe Germany or something. I mean, that's that's always sounded interesting. Well, no, like no. We're talking about Wales because, you know, we've seen <clears throat> British, you know, Isles, so to speak, but we haven't seen um, we haven't seen that fortune as far as Wales. So that would be interesting to see. I, you know, there's a, for all the travel that you've done, I've probably done as, as little as you, as, as, as much as you've done, I've done as little. So I've, I've been to Matamoros, which is right yeah. across the border uh, in Texas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mexico. Yeah. It's, it's like yeah, yeah. Uh, three miles. Cool. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> as far as going out of the country. Yeah. You know, it's, um. And I don't know, probably living in Alaska as a high school student probably whet my appetite for travel. Um, I think prior to that, I hadn't thought much about it at all. Um, but to me, it is, it is very educational. I think it really mm -hmm. broadens your horizons as far as being able to do that. And, um, and now I know, obviously, with COVID, this is you know not an optimal time to be doing much traveling and some international travels restricted. And, and um, but I will say, you know, once we hopefully get a return to normalcy, you know, I'd like to do, you know, um, I'd, I'd be very open to more international travel. And I'll say this also, as far as international travel, and, and again, I know, 
you know, it can be, uh, you know, there's a lot of unknown to it. But whenever we went to London, whenever we went to Ireland, to Scotland, um, if you're going to do international travel, um, that's very, very comfortable. I mean, it's, it's um, you're obviously in foreign countries on foreign land, but it's very, very comfortable. You know, when we got there, um, because every, it, things don't seem foreign. They're different, but they don't seem foreign. And I remember going to Ireland to where they didn't ask you if you were American. They asked you what state you were from. So they knew you were American. They were just right. kind of curious right, what, what part of America you were from. And I remember seeing a ton of American flags and stuff like that. I mean, that, I think they were probably proud to have relatives or some kind of connection to the U.S. Maybe they were American and living in Ireland or whatever. But if, if yeah, I say that to say, you know, if you ever do decide to um, do international travel, you might consider, you know, starting with something like, you know, um, going to London or um, maybe you know, Canada. Whatever the case may be. Yeah, Canada's great. You know, I've only been to Vancouver, but that was that was great, and uh, and it was another where it just felt very very familiar. Right. You know, kind of like I'm sure a border town if you're going into Mexico. You know. Yeah. Yeah, I you can almost yeah, Matamoros is not your. Uh, it's. Uh, it's a border town. I, I don't think I've been to that particular border town. It's kind of like uh, Juan, Oklahoma. Oh, gotcha. Yes, it's like <laughs> over Juan, America. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's about that's about the equivalent yeah, there. Yeah. Very exciting. Very exciting. All right, Dave. Well, thanks a lot for your time and for thanks regaling for us with you. your travel log and your stories. And uh, next time you go somewhere, you need to come back and tell us. Uh, uh, a little bit more about uh, either riding a camel or seeing uh, castles in Germany or. Yeah, I'd be happy to. I'd be yeah. happy. As long as I could get one of the uh, coffee cups with the cool logo, uh, I am in. See, bam, right there. I know I have one of those coming and it's going to have, like I said, it will have a place of honor on the shelf there in my man cave. <laughs> I can promise. So next time you're there, you know, I'll, I'll show you where it is and everything. Yeah, it'll be very good times. All right. Fun, so. All right. Well, thanks. Uh, you know, and if you've been listening to this and you like it, uh, I ask you, uh, you know, go ahead, subscribe, like, share it. Um, and if you want to watch this on YouTube, you can see the Scott Townsend show on YouTube, the YouTube channel there. And once again, like, subscribe, share it, tell all your friends. But uh, Dave, thanks again. Appreciate it. Hey, I and appreciate you, Scott. Always good to see you, my friend. So for Dave Austin, this is Scott Townsend. Thanks for joining the Scott Townsend Show, and we'll talk to you later. Scott Townsend Show is a Deeds O Man production. For more episodes, visit the Scott Townsend Show YouTube channel, listen on Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. Scott.